Well, with the 2024 presidential race already taking shape, there are some Michigan components that may be playing part. After his brief stint as a candidate for governor, Michigan businessman Perry Johnson now testing the waters in Iowa to run for president. Political reporter Rick Albin sat down with former Michigan Congressman Mike Rogers today to find out if his latest efforts in Iowa, New Hampshire and elsewhere might lead him to jump into the race. Congressman, I want to talk about a group that you have formed or I've a movement, perhaps, <laughs> that you're trying to create, that you say you and your wife were having a discussion and decided that the conversation in politics today, my words, not yours, is just too coarse, mm -hmm. that it is too divisive, that is not solution-based. So what did you do to try to counter that? You came up with? Yeah, leadamerica.org. And what we're trying to do is change the, just change the narrative. We have serious problems. And this sugar high, slap you in the face style politics, um, you know, feels good and it, you know, get your juices going, but it doesn't solve anything. As a matter of fact, I think it's making the country weaker and weaker and weaker. And our adversary, our strategic adversary, in a strategic competition, China, the Communist Party of China, is getting stronger and stronger in their understanding of how they can beat us in technology, in diplomacy, in militarily, uh, and economically. And so we thought, let's get out there and try to get people to realize, hey, America is still an amazing place. It's, you can still do the, you know, make your American dream come true here. You can be your own person, do your own good in your own way here in America, like nowhere else in the world. But we have to have that conversation. And then we have to start being a bit of a happy warrior about things we have to change to make it better, to get to move forward so that we can compete and protect prosperity for future generations. A number of members of Congress, your former member of Congress, have pointed out that it will not be long before the interest on the national debt will supersede the amount of money that we spend on defense in this country. You just pointed out that China, that has to be seen from your perspective as an adversary, has been building up their military. And in fact, in another conversation, you suggested their Navy is now, at least numerically in ship size, larger than ours. What do you do about that? I mean, that dollars and cents problem is not something that can be rapidly changed. No, I do think we need to reevaluate how we're going to position our US military to compete with a country like China, third largest nuclear arsenal in the world very modern, maybe as modern as the U.S. arsenal. They have uh, militarized space. Uh, they have killer satellites to take out our satellites. People say, what does that mean? Think of your GPS going out and never coming back. Things like that that would put us in a disadvantage in any battlefield confrontation. And so we're just going to have to start thinking, okay, how do we protect ourselves in space better? How do we invest money for Department of Defense better? Can we ring out some of the wasteful spending in the Department of Defense uh, and make sure that that money goes to things that we know will help us. How do we revamp our U.S. Navy to meet this challenge? What do the U.S. Marine structure look like in deployments in Asia to make sure that we can just counter it? And again, this isn't about looking for conflict, it's looking to avoid conflict. And if you get weak enough and they think they're strong enough, that's when conflict starts. So we need to understand the world in that context and try to make sure that the decisions we're making and the spending we're making fits that and adjusts that. I'm going to invite you to come back and, and set for an entire show so we can talk about some more of these conversations and these ideas. But you know what I've got to ask you. You're going to places like New Hampshire. You're going to places like Iowa. You're going to places like South Carolina. Interestingly, people who are eyeing a run for the U.S. presidency would be showing up in those same places, in that same space, at the same time. And I know you're not going to say that you're running for president. <laughs> However, if I go on television and say that I think you're thinking about running for president, would I be wrong? <laughs> you are so good at this, <laughs> Rick. Uh, listen, what we're trying to do is we really did want to start this organization to help change the narrative. Uh, and when we started, and the way you do that is showing up at places that are going to have an outsized impact on what the presidential field and the presidential election in 2024 looks like. There's a lot of yapping at that 30,000 foot level uh, on this race. Some people say it's over already, it's done, they give you a number. Uh, we've been to those places, and what we're finding out is people are hungry for solutions, 
uh, in, in an effort to bring the country back together. And what can happen? Two things. You know, maybe at the, at the end of that run of trying to have this substantive solutions debate, uh, somebody says, why don't you throw your hat in the ring? We'll have to certainly evaluate it. We're, we're not even close to that. Or candidates start drafting in on this notion that, hey, maybe this is a better message. This is a better way that we can lead the country. This is a better way we can talk about issues so we can get something done. That's a home run for us. Speculation that Governor Gretchen Whitmer might be interested as a Democratic candidate if President Biden doesn't run has been met with flat denials from the governor. Biden has still not officially declared for a second term.